Tonight, top EU stories from the UNIT website include EU chaos and nine other outrageous predictions for 2014. European Commission approves $4.1 billion in aid for building Greek highways. EU in preliminary deal on audit market shakeup. And the EU is supporting a brutal military occupation in Western Sahara. Plus, appointment of members to the Court of Auditors. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. A cash grab by Eurocrats on any savings above €100,000 as panicking Brussels officials try to fight off deflation and end equality could be on the cards this year. Or possibly a triumph by anti-European Union politicians in May's elections who form an alliance to become the majority group in the European Parliament, sending the Union into chaos as a result. These are just two of the ten forecasts from Saxo Bank's latest outrageous predictions list that analysts at the Trading House make every year. However, if some of the forecasts do come to pass, as a few have previously, such as last year's prediction that gold would drop by $500 an ounce to $1,200, Europe could be in for a rough ride this year. According to Saxo, there's a chance that Germany falls into recession while France's CAC40 index could plunge 40% from this year's peak. But the predictions are not confined to Europe. Other events that could rattle investors include traders piling into the yen as the global recovery falters, driving the desperate Bank of Japan to delete all government debt as it tries a simple but untested accountancy trick. U.S. politicians performing Act 2 of How to Disrupt the Economy, with Congress squabbling leading to deflation in the world's biggest economy. A plunge in the oil price to $80 a barrel as unconventional production methods cause an oversupply and hedge funds start to short crude. Investors realising the 700% premium that tech stocks Amazon, Netflix, Twitter, Pandora Media and Yelp trade at is an unsustainable bubble. Well, sounds like the four horsemen of the fiscal apocalypse are riding into town. But how likely is this to happen? Well, if you go to the audio section of our website and look up the interview we did with Bank of England Monetary Policy Advisor Dr Eric Edmund, you'll realise that most of what he said would happen has already happened. As I said yesterday when you asked the question, what is supporting the economic rally in Europe? Well, it's fueled from equity debt and money printing, and that means it's not a reflection of economic activity. And in simple terms, that means there is going to be a correction needed. And the bigger they let the error get, the larger the correction. The European Commission, the executive arm of the European Union, has approved €3 billion Euros in financial aid to help build four major highways in Greece. Construction on the highways has been halted over the past few years as the country has grappled with a severe debt crisis that's required big budget cutbacks. But don't worry, good people of Greece, the EU kleptocrats are riding into town on their bronze bull. We know you're hungry, we know you're homeless, we know you're jobless, but it's all good. We bring you heap big money with which you must build roads. Can I just say that I love this term, the executive arm. What a play on words. What is the chief executive of a corporation? He's the overall lead decision maker, right? OK. And the executive board of directors? Well, that's right, the most senior decision makers. But who elects these people to the board? And is there any kind of workers' election? No. Nothing wrong with that in a company or privately owned corporation. It's an enterprise, so there is no need for a representation of the people or democracy. But the European Parliament says it wants to be democratic and representative of the people. But the kleptocrats speak with forked tongue because the EU Commission, its executive arm, as we've just discovered, is unelected, self-appointed. It's basically a board of directors. They have the real power and are accountable only to themselves and cannot be removed by the people. 
Well, until that structure is corrected, we have no freedom. We are merely serfs to a dictatorial master. The European Union has reached a preliminary deal on forcing companies to change their accountants on a regular basis to improve bookkeeping quality, the bloc's presidency of Lithuania said on Tuesday. The reform was prompted by the 2007-2009 financial crisis, during which taxpayers had to rescue banks that had been given a clean bill of health by auditors only months earlier. Requiring periodic change of auditor is also seen as a way of increasing competition in the sector which is dominated globally by the big four accounting firms, PwC, Deloitte, KPMG and Ernst & Young. Now what is not clear to us just yet is whether this applies only to company auditors or if it applies to accountants as well. Now, if it just applies to auditors, then private limited companies with less than six and a half million pounds of turnover will be exempt. However, if this is not the case, then even small businesses that use the vehicle of a limited company to offset risk will be required to make regular changes in accountant. And to be even handed here, the likes of Deloitte and KPMG, etc., have had a monopoly in this space for far too long and have far too cosy relationships with the banks giving potential for situations like the asset grabbing undertaken by NatWest and Royal Bank of Scotland, Assets and Properties Division. For 38 years, the occupation of Western Sahara by Morocco has been largely ignored by the rest of the world. The reasons for this aren't profound. It's sparsely populated, difficult to get to, and not particularly strategically important. It is also one of the greatest moral failures in the international community's modern history. In 1975, in violation of a world court judgment, Morocco invaded the former Spanish colony and effectively annexed it. The people who lived in the territory, the Sahrawi, fled in their thousands as their villages were burned and livestock slaughtered. Now, the story on our website gives more detailed background into this history, but this is a shining example of the Euro Bureau turning a blind eye to the plight of a population when it suits it. So why all the interest in Western Sahara? Well, in a word, resources. If you use the search box on our website and search for Western Sahara, you'll see our research team has built up a library of articles on Morocco and the Western Sahara. The reality is that the EU is looking beyond its borders for agriculture and fishing. A hidden testimony that its common agricultural policy and common fisheries policies have been an utter failure. That has critically damaged fish stocks in Europe. Rattling through the legislation section right now are EU Commission and Parliament internal administration issues. It's all a bit humdrum, but we think it's worth being aware of who's who. So the European Court of Auditors is making appointment changes, and John, our researcher, has been digging around to find out who's getting the new jobs. First up is Nicolaus Milionis of Greece. Born in Arta, Greece, on the 7th of September 1959, he holds a PhD in public finance law from the University of Athens, which he gained in 1999, whilst working in the Hellenic Court of Audit as an appellate judge. In 2004, he became councillor, a post he still holds, and in 2011-12, he was section president of the Hellenic Court of Audit. Next up is Daniela Lamarck of France. From 1998 to 2005, Daniela Lamarck was president of the Court of Auditors of the Haute de Normandie region and has been auditor and public auditor for the Court of Auditors between 1984 and 1998. Lamarck is also currently external auditor of the European University Institute in Florence, a post she has had since 2011, and furthermore, Lamarck is a Knight of the Legion of Honour and an officer of the National Order of Merit in France. And finally, Henry Grethen of Luxembourg. He has already served as a member of the Court of Auditors for the period of 2008 to 2010. And prior to this, Mr Grethen has held the posts of the Luxembourg Minister of Economic Affairs and Minister of Transport. And from 2004 to 2007 was Chairman to the EU Committee of Budgetary Control. Henry Grethen was Secretary General of the Luxembourg Democrat Party from 1981 to 1990 and prior to this has also worked for a period of 10 years in Luxembourg as an independent economic advisor. 
Of course, the irony is that, having not had its accounts signed off by the auditors for the last 19 years, it doesn't strike us as though these new appointees are going to be that busy. But we'll keep you updated. We have a report just out yesterday from the European Commission press office, and links to the story are below. Well, here are some of the excerpts from Michael Barnier's speech to the Chinese in Beijing, along with a few of my comments. Part 1. Europe has taken the right steps and is coming out of this crisis. I speak to you today not only at the beginning of a new calendar year, but also at the beginning of what we hope will be a new chapter in our economies. Yep, yeah, that's right, Michael. The political elite, in their infinite wisdom, didn't have the bottle to let the banks collapse under the weight of their own folly. No, instead, they decided to saddle the people and taxpayers with the debt and let the bankers drive off into the sunset in 70,000 euro Nissan Skyland GTRs. And there is an upside, of course. It's boosted the sales of supercars in the Asian market. Michael then goes on to say... Over the last five years, we have taken radical steps to regulate the financial sector better, return public finances to health and improve government of the euro area. Well, indeed, with the creation of the European Stability Mechanism, which has the power to make exorbitant charges over member states with only seven days' notice within which to pay, and with no way to appeal the fiscal fleecing, to be even more radical, the ESM has given over members of its senior personnel diplomatic and legal immunity from prosecution. <laughs> that sure is pretty radical. Michael continues to say, We demand that banks hold more and better capital, that they strengthen their risk governance and curtail the excesses of the past. We created new supervisory authorities to make sure banks, markets and insurance companies are supervised adequately in a similar way across the EU. And we are well on the way to creating a banking union to fix the fragmentation of banking markets and break the negative link between banks and sovereigns. The first important pillar of the banking union, the single supervisory mechanism, is now law and will be implemented in November this year. The European Central Bank will become fully responsible for the banking system in the euro area at the end of this year. And the final pillar, the single resolution mechanism, was recently agreed by Ministers of Finance of the EU. So folks, you and I have not been told just how well the European Union's assimilation of its member states into a single federal institution has been going. Perhaps the Euro Bureau boffins think it's a little too high brow for us simple European serfs. However, the Chinese know, and being a communist regime, they're loving it. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>